Demon Slayer is an anime that takes place in a world plagued by demons. Who would have thought? For centuries, the Demon Slayer Corps, an organization of trained warriors, have fought against the man-eating monsters, with no real light at the end of the tunnel. They need a real Demon Slayer, someone who lives and breathes only two things, dead demons and pizza. I think the perfect man for the job is Dante from Devil May Cry, a professional devil hunter and someone who has a much better success rate on clearing the world of demons multiple times over. Dante is a paranormal mercenary and the second child of legendary demon knight Sparta. But is the devil hunter good enough to do what multiple generations of demon slayers could not? Well, let's compare the highest tiers of the demon slayer demons, the upper moons and their master Muzan Kibutsuji, to some of the demons on Dante's resume and see how difficult it would be for the son of Sparta to solve this little demon infestation. If you don't already know, the upper moons are the six strongest demons in the world of Demon Slayer. The source of the demon infestation, Muzan Kibutsuji, creates demons himself with his parasitic blood. The more blood you receive, the stronger your demon transformation. Using their extremely versatile and terrifying blood demon arts, all of the upper moons are capable of causing massive damage to buildings. Even the weakest of the group, Upper Moon 6 Daki, is capable of dismantling an entire block of a village with her belts. Upper Moon 2 Doma created a giant ice statue that was capable of clearly destroying at least a city block. And at Demon Slayer's peak, at their most highballed estimate, you also have Yutaro's self-destructive ability that can definitely decimate multiple city blocks at the very least if we're going to use more modern day buildings in our estimate. Taking that into account, and considering even the strongest of Demon Slayers barely struggle to compare to that strength and are still able to decapitate them, an Upper Moon Demon's durability has to sit around building level potency as well. Durable as the demons may be, including high speed regeneration on a large scale to reverse any damage if they do get hurt, Upper Moon Demons, including Muzan himself, have been decapitated by the humans before when breaking their limits, so they can't really be any higher than that. This is also accomplished by the Demon Slayers wielding the power of the sun, which most demons in the Demon Slayer world are extremely vulnerable to, it being their biggest weakness. What also makes the Upper Moons terrifying is their blinding speed. Clearing the sound barrier, almost every single demon in the Upper Moon rank moves faster than the eye can perceive, placing them at the beginning of hypersonic level. This can also be confirmed by Muzan's assault on the Lower Moons, the weaker version of this organization, decapitating Lower Moon 3 before the demon could even understand what happened. At most, making this action for Muzan Mach 10. There are moments of Demon Slayer that would place characters at lightning time, as Hashira Mitsuru Kanroji does dodge a lightning attack from Upper Moons 4, and Mitsuru is by no means the strongest Hashira. I can't take it which would put most Demon Slayers above her in that speed estimation. Putting Demon Slayer in the possible massively hypersonic range. Now, what does make this controversial is the fact Mitsuru Kanroji is caught off guard by a sound attack right after this lightning feat. Anime and manga feats can get weird, so it's hard to concretely estimate the speed. But to be fair, when you compare all of this to some of the demons that Dante has already slain in his past, you'll see why it's pointless in the long run. A devil hunter for most of his life, from rebellion Rebellious teen to rebellious elder. Even at Devil May Cry 3, what's meant to be the start of Dante's journey, we see him confronting boss demons like Cerberus, the guardian of a massive demon tower overlooking the entire city. Cerberus is able to instantly freeze the entrance of the tower, as well as the entire base around it, placing the very first boss on Dante's big adventure at slightly lower to possibly comparable attack potential compared to Demon Slayer's maximum single to multi-city block territory. There is also demons from Devil May Cry 4, like Burial, who are said to coat entire mountains in flames, and while this could just be the boast of a cocky demon, we do watch Burial burn an entire town to ash, and then in the same game, this demon is eclipsed by Echidna, a massive plant demon that was able to entirely manipulate the ecosystem and weather of a large forest. This forest alone, including its own mountain ranges, waterfalls, lakes, and entire facilities, all controlled by Echidna, where she's able to attack from above 
or from her vegetation. We have only discussed three demons on Dante's kill roster, and the threats have already far surpassed entire town level attack potential. And considering how Dante is casually taunting and dancing around these mountain dismantling threats, it's clear that these are just small fry to him. Even demons like Blitz, a weaker mob monster that shows up with hordes of weaker demons, are causing large levels of destruction, but even more importantly, becoming lightning itself and moving at the speed of lightning. A controversial feat in Demon Slayer that even weaker characters like Nero, a much more rookie devil hunter in Devil May Cry, can already react to. So when you consider a devil hunter like Dante who's been in the game for decades, there are demons like Damned Rook that shoot actual laser beams, confirmed in the Devil May Cry data book, that would put a veteran like Dante at a speed faster than light. And considering all of these demons barely do even cosmetic damage to Dante, at the most, Burial lights Dante's coattail on fire, the Devil Hunter wouldn't even flinch from a mere building level blow. All six of the Upper Moons and Muzan combined wouldn't even be able to scratch Dante, let alone blink before the Son of Sparta makes multiple moves. They are barely competing with the lower level demons that have to try and fight Dante in packs because they stand little chance alone against the Son of Sparta. Experience has nothing to do with it either, as Dante is treating a demon like Cerberus like shit in his own prequel game. Wow, I've never seen a talking mud before. You know, in a dog show, you definitely take first place. You want me to make a <laughs> Easy, Fido. How about I take you for a walk? Come on, puppy. Let's go. A demon who is probably the closest you can get to a representation of the Upper Moons if you want to be generous and also disrespectful to Cerberus. You ask, how would he beat the demons? Well, Dante is well versed in hand-to-hand -hand combat, shown when he casually outpaces a mercenary like Lady in close quarters. So, not saying Dante really does need a weapon to fight against demons of this mediocre caliber, but the Devil Hunter can, if absolutely necessary, easily decapitate Muzan with the attack power behind his slashes. The most durable of the entire group, as Dante's signature sword Rebellion is empowered by his demon energy, making it as strong, if not stronger, than Dante's base strength. And that's only one of Dante's multiple weapons carried out throughout the Devil May Cry series. I say this because if Dante discovers he's up against demons that are weak to sunlight, he also has weapons that specifically could take advantage of that. Kalina and the second can fire heat rays, and various other weapons can call upon hellfire like Balrog or Ifrit both tactical ways to exploit the demon's weakness and also destroy them entirely without letting them regenerate. This is the perfect answer for the leader of demons Muzan, who is known to split himself into 1800 pieces to try and escape. Worst comes to worst, Dante has Pandora's box that can utilize missiles or other weapons of mass destruction to leave no trace behind. On the Demon Slayer side, none of the demons have any power that completely counters Dante or ignores his overwhelming durability. The Upper Moon 6 duo Daki and Yutaro need to be decapitated together, which with Dante's speed and weapons, that's not hard to imagine. Upper Moon 4 Zoakuten hides his true body by shrinking and letting its emotional clones do the damage, but when you consider Dante has the potential to destroy everything in the vicinity with one of his many weapons, or probably the demon perception to discover the main body and behead it, the overwhelming stat advantage doesn't make this hard to believe. This would be the same with Nakime, the Biwa playing demon who can conjure an entire infinity castle, a massive maze of constantly changing rooms and locations. Even with the most generous scenario being Upper Moon 2 Doma's Cold Wind ability that freezes opponents internally through subatomic particles would barely affect Dante's demon body, as Dante has endured much worse internal damage in his own series, being impaled by demons with much higher attack potency than Doma for fun. In fact, Dante messing with the demons from Demon Slayer is the most prolonging of their lives they can really hope for. And with the regeneration factor, that just means all the more ass for Dante to kick. At Dante's maximum, he's fighting threats like the Savior from Devil May Cry 4 who can create their own suns and moons, or eldritch horrors like Argosax, whose mere existence rips the space-time continuum and merges the human and demon realms just by being awoken from its slumber. If you really wanted to, these arguments could put Dante on a level of scaling to take on solar system to multiversal potential threats. 
and it only gets higher when you add Devil May Cry 5's entire timeline and all the additional stat boosts that Dante needed to defeat Urizen and the Klypoth tree, all confirmed stronger than Dante's previous threats. Considering none of this video even discusses the topic of Dante having power multipliers on account of his multiple Devil Trigger transformations, we don't need to take it any further than this. When you have demon slayers that struggle to reach lightning time and can only muster the strength to decapitate building level durable demons, it's no wonder you'd struggle for centuries trying to eliminate Muzan and his demonic creations. Hope they got pizza in the Taisho era. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you made it this far, I sincerely appreciate it. Catch an end screen video if you want to continue your binge. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.